Hello, third graders. Today we are going to learn about nonfiction text structure. So, what is nonfiction text structure? Let's start by looking at these three words. Nonfiction means something real, so like true facts and information. Text is something written, like the words on the page that you're reading. And structure is how something is built. So the home that you live in is a structure. It has different parts and pieces and rooms. So if we put these three words together, nonfiction text structure, and think of the meanings of each word, it helps us see that nonfiction text structure is the way you build a piece of real writing. In other words, it's how an author builds their nonfiction writing. You can also think of it this way. Here on the screen, I have three different buildings. I have a grocery store, I have a house, and I have a restaurant. These are all buildings, but they look different because the architects designed them for different purposes or reasons. Authors are just like architects. They design their text for different purposes, and their design is the text structure. So here are the five different types of nonfiction text structures. There is descriptive, sequence, cause and effect, problem and solution, and compare and contrast. Now it's important to remember that an author could just use one of these text structures, or they could use more than one, maybe two or three of them in their book. So we're going to look at each one of these individually so that we can get a better idea of what each text structure looks like. We're going to start with descriptive text structure. Descriptive text structure is when the author has a topic, an idea, a person, or a thing, and they're describing it by listing all of its features or characteristics or examples. Sometimes authors might call this categorical text structure. But basically, the author is trying to help us get a better understanding of their topic by describing all about its features and its characteristics. So if I'm reading a book that's all about whales, or if I'm reading a book about all the different types of plants in the world, or a book about what it's like to visit the country of Spain, the authors are going to describe those topics with lots of details and characteristics and features. They're going to use a descriptive text structure. And I can help determine that a text structure is descriptive because it will be using features. The author will be giving me the names of different parts of something, or maybe the author will give me examples or characteristics. If I see any of those things in my text, then it's probably a descriptive text structure. Here's an example. This author is writing about alligators, and they are going to give lots of characteristics and features of alligators. It says, alligators are fascinating animals. An adult female alligator is about 8 feet long, and an adult male is about 11 feet long. Alligators have four short legs. The front legs have five toes, while the back legs have four toes. Alligators have bony plates on their backs. They also have nostrils on the top of their long snouts that lets them breathe while the rest of their body is underwater. They have about 75 teeth in their mouths at one time. But as teeth wear down, they are replaced. As a result, an alligator can have over 2,000 teeth in his lifetime. So this author did a great job of describing alligators. They told us all sorts of different features of alligators, like they have 75 teeth, their nostrils are on top of their snout, they have four short legs, they can be 8 to 11 feet long. So putting this all together, I can see that this author was using a descriptive text structure. They were describing alligators for us. The next text structure is called sequence. A sequence text structure is when the author describes items or events in order 
or tells the steps to follow to do something or make something. Sometimes an author, instead of calling it sequence, they will call it chronological order or sequential or time order. They all mean the same thing. So for example, if I'm reading a recipe for how to bake a cake, or I'm reading a biography about Abraham Lincoln's life, or I'm reading directions on how to play a game, I am going to be reading a piece of text that is using a sequence text structure. They're going to be putting things in order for me. And here are some things that I can look for. If I see directions, steps, order, dates or times, or the sequencing words like first, next, then, last, finally, if I see any of those things, it's a big clue that the author is using a sequence text structure. Here is an example. In this example, the author is using a sequence text structure to describe the birth of baby alligators. And notice how they use months and days to put things in order. It says, like all reptiles, baby alligators hatch from eggs. Male and female alligators mate in early May. After mating, female alligators build nests that are about eight feet long and two feet high. Near the end of June, the female lays 35 to 50 eggs in the nest. She covers the nest with vegetation and the eggs sit in there for about 65 days. Near the end of August, the baby alligators begin making high-pitched sounds from inside their eggs. This sound tells the mother that it is time to remove the nest covering. When the baby alligator hatches from its egg, it is six to eight inches long. So on this chart, you can see some of the events that were in order in this text, such as the author mentioned that at the end of June is when the eggs are laid, and then the eggs are covered for 65 days. And then after those 65 days, the eggs will hatch in August. The next text structure we're going to look at is cause and effect. Cause and effect text structure is when the author describes something that has happened, which has had an effect on or caused something else to happen. It's kind of like a chain reaction. One thing makes something else happen. So the effect is what happened and the cause is why it happened. So some examples, if you're reading about what happens if you eat too much junk food, or if you read about a flood that was caused by a hurricane, or if you're reading about why panda bears are endangered, you would be reading a cause and effect text structure. Some words to look for. If you see the words as a result, because of, due to, since, leads to, reasons, caused by, or causes, those words are big clues that the author is telling us a cause and effect. Here's an example of cause and effect text structure. This author is going to be telling us about what happens if we grind our teeth. Grinding teeth is when you rub your teeth together. This text says, do you grind your teeth? Some people grind their teeth because they are stressed or nervous. Other people grind their teeth while they are sleeping and they don't even know that they are doing it. People who grind their teeth may end up harming their teeth. When a person grinds his teeth, he might end up removing the healthy enamel that coats his teeth. Grinding teeth can lead to tooth pain chipped teeth, and even broken teeth. The habit can also cause headaches and jaw pain. So this author was using a cause and effect text structure. They have their cause, grinding your teeth, and then the effects are what happens when you grind your teeth. You can get tooth pain, headaches, or chipped teeth. We have cause and we have several effects. The next text structure is problem and solution. Problem and solution text structure is when the author gives information about a problem and explains one or more solutions. Now, it's important to remember that sometimes when the author is doing problem and solution, they might also tell the causes of the problem. And if they do this, then they're also using a cause and effect text structure. I'll show you an example. 
First, let's think about some uh, text that might be using a problem and solution text structure. If you're reading about pollution and what we can do to decrease it, that would be a problem and solution text structure. Or if you're reading about endangered animals and how we can help them. Or about what to do if you have a headache, the things you can do to feel better. That would be problem and solution. When authors use problem and solution, they will typically use words like problem, solution, answer, issue, or solve. So if you see those words, they can be big clues that there is a problem and solution in the text. Here's an example that I wanted to share with you. This is a problem and solution text structure, but they also use some cause and effect in here too. This one is about the Statue of Liberty. It says, did you know the Statue of Liberty has held two different torches? There were two major problems with the first torch built in the 1800s. First, the windows in the torch had openings. Rain fell into these openings and damaged the arm's support structure, making it unsafe. The other problem occurred in 1916 when an explosion occurred in New York Harbor and hit the Statue of Liberty. People talked for many years about the problems with the Statue of Liberty's torch and how they could solve the problem. Finally, in 1984, the first torch was removed and, re and placed in the museum at the statue's base. Then a new torch made of gold was added in 1986, making it safe once again. So you can see there's a little bit of cause and effect because uh, we see that there was an explosion in New York Harbor and then that caused the Statue of Liberty's torch to be damaged. So there's a little bit of cause and effect there. But the main problem is that this torch is damaged. It's unsafe. So since that's a problem, they came up with a solution. So their solution was that the old torch was removed and put in a museum, and a new torch was made out of gold. So they were able to solve the problem. It's a problem and solution text structure. Our last text structure is compare and contrast. Compare and contrast text structure is when the author describes the similarities and differences between two or more subjects. So when we compare, we find things that are similar or alike. When we contrast, we find things that are different. So if you're reading about the similarities and differences between pet dogs and cats, or the PlayStation versus the Xbox, which one's better, or going to the beach or a water park, how they're alike or different. If you're reading about baseball or softball being the better sport, or Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter movies, how they're alike and different, that would be a compare and contrast text structure. When authors compare and contrast, they typically use words like alike, different, in common, however, similar, but, both, and also. So if you see those words, it's a big clue that the author is using compare and contrast. Here's an example comparing and contrasting alligators and crocodiles. It says, alligators and crocodiles are two animals that are a lot alike. They are both reptiles with long snouts, a mouthful of sharp teeth, and long tails. Many people get these two animals confused, but there are some major differences between the two reptiles. First, alligators have wider U-shaped snouts, while crocodiles have more pointed V-shaped snouts. Also, crocodiles also always have a fourth tooth on each side that sticks up over the upper lip when their mouths are closed. Another difference is that crocodiles tend to live in salt water, whereas alligators tend to live in fresh water. So on my Venn diagram here, you can see the similarities and differences that I picked out from that text. So alligators and crocodiles, they are both reptiles with long snouts, sharp teeth, and a long tail. But they also describe the differences between them. Alligators have a wide U-shaped snout, their teeth stick out over their lip when their mouth is closed, and they live in fresh water. On the other hand, crocodiles, they have the V-shaped snout, and they live in salt water. So just to review, there are five different text structures, and these text structures are used in nonfiction texts.
The author can decide to use one of these or can use more than one of these, depending on the information that they want to give. So they might use a descriptive text structure where they describe the different features and characteristics of something. They could use a sequence, putting events or steps in order. They could do a cause and effect. Something happens because of something else. Problem and solution or compare and contrast. So those were the five nonfiction text structures. So when you're reading a nonfiction text, see if you can figure out which text structure the author is using.